هيك بده يكون وصل لهاد؟ What are you doing inside the anchor here also? The quality of your watching is good. Good evening. Good evening. So, uh, you know me? <laughs> All right. So, I'm Pastor Ace of Dino Baptist Bible Church. In San Mateo, San. Ace of my last task. But there's Tommy, ask me in his absence to preach to you. So, Hi, Mike Jan. Hi. You're not Tagalog, right? Hi, Tagalog. We have been, I've met Father Mateos. We have spoken for a bit. The known each other, so we agree. The one so saved is a. Afternoon. Where is my text? So when uh, Brother Stocky told me that, uh, oh, you have to place my church, so I was thinking, wow, well, the attendance in there is uh, mature, a mature Christian. Huh? So what will I place to these people? Okay? So the basics would not do, but I. Uh, Actually, the story of David and Goliath is very familiar, man. Very common and yet so powerful. Powerful enough that uh, you can learn a lot from it. Because uh, I was surveying okay, the, battle, uh, the list of battles in the whole Bible. And uh, I was, I wanted to pick the best, okay, the best uh, battles. Uh, this is the battle that is uh, recorded in detail. The battle between David and Goliath. So, it's so an introduction. Uh, the title of the sermon is So David Prevailed Over the Philistine. So David Prevailed Over the Philistine. The subtitle is Winning Strategic Battles in the War in this war that we are in. So, how many minutes do I have? Okay, so I notice your recording is not on the main channel, but anyway. So the reality of war, number one. So here in the Philippines, for most of us, or all of us actually, who's the eldest here? I think Brother James. <laughs> so we have not seen war, amen? The, the eldest people I know, my grandparents, actually my grandmother, especially my uh, grandfather also, my grandmother, especially, uh, who passed away last, I think, 2000, 2008, around that time. So, in our, ch in our childhood, she would, uh, uh, she would tell stories of how the Japanese are actually killing babies. They would throw them in the air and then, uh, bayoneta, you know, bayoneta. We will kill the babies. So war is a terrible thing. Right? We don't need, we don't want war. Many will uh, suffer, many will uh, die. Okay? But uh, as an introduction, war is inevitable. Okay? It's not something uh, uh, you can uh, avoid forever. Okay? The Bible tells us that there's a, there's a time to love and a time to hate. It's a time of war, a time of peace. So our time today is a time of peace, but the reality is for Christians, we are in war. Amen? Okay, so Philippians 2.25, you want to go there, but I have it here. What is the introduction? Philippians 2.25 says that, yet I suppose it's necessary to send you to a, you, Epaphroditus, my brother, and companion in labor, a fellow soldier. But your messenger and he that ministered to my wife. So if you notice there, uh, Paul is uh, referring to Epaphroditus as a brother, a companion in labor, but also a fellow soldier. So uh, Paul sees himself as a soldier. Amen? So what are soldiers for? They, fought, they fight wars. 
Okay? They are the type of uh, people, citizen, but they are expendable in some cases. So it's hard, but it's a reality. Okay? We have to sometimes. Sometimes we have, uh, by the way, there is uh, news right now, right? In Iran and Saudi, have you heard? So it is uh, possible that the uh, war will start, but uh, that's been going for some time now. Okay, 2 Timothy 2.3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Referring to Timothy. Again to Timothy 2.4, No man that warrant and tangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So, uh, every Christian, especially those servants of God, okay, if you serve God, if you're active servant of God, serious servant of God, if you're a soul winner, a preacher, okay, if you're a Christian, if you support the work, you're a soldier. Okay? When uh, we were in uh, CAT, I don't know if you know that. So, uh, the organization of the military is not just all soldiers, no? That all artillery, Air Force. There's also supply, right? Uh, the logistics, they call it. So, even if you're a mother, for example, you're a pastor's wife, you have a very important role, amen? The ladies have a very important role. Very important. For the men, if we don't have wives, we are incomplete. We feel like we're stupid. <laughs> what are we doing? Huh? We need ladies. We need godly women to support us. But we are referred to as soldiers. Amen? If you're a soldier, you're ready to die. Supposedly. Okay? And if you're a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ, you should be ready to die. Uh, somehow we can relate to that because, uh, again, the, this extended uh, time of peace has made us soft. Right? But uh, it should not be to the Christians because our war and our battles happen every day. Amen? Amen. That is the reality. If you don't know, if you don't, if you don't know that, if you don't accept that, then we have a problem. Okay? So there, are, there is this thing that uh, different types of war that is being waged, and if you are ignorant, you're already defeated. That's the truth. So especially in the Christian life, we don't uh, wage war using carnal means. Okay. So another. Uh, Philemon 1 2 said, Our beloved Apaya and our people are fellow soldiers. So, same thing. Philemon is fellow soldier of uh, Paul. So they're soldiers. So, another thing in our introduction, we should know that we should not fight all wars. Uh, by the way, what's the difference between battle and war? So, the war is the long term the long uh, period of time where do, you do battles. So the battle is the, the individual battles. Okay, so battles, if you remember the World War II, okay? The World War II spans for uh, what number of years? History. Five. Five? I think, yeah, about that time, about 1930s, actually to 1940s. So about, about nine years, ten years. So, but, Battles, okay? The battles that, do you know battles? World War II, the Battle of Leyte, the Battle of uh, Midway, the Battle of San San Man, no? There's a lot of battles. So, in a Christian life, the battles happen very uh, consistently and every day, okay? If you have, uh, uh, for example, uh, just this afternoon, we have a battle. So many. There are many dogs. We are thankful because there's Great. Okay. Okay. But uh, there's a lot of battle you're battling with, amen? If you are you have some temptation, you have to battle it. Okay, matamaran, what's that? Laziness. You have to battle it. Okay, false doctrine, false teachers, you battle it on Facebook or even uh, on the streets. Okay. You have to, and you have to win. Okay, so but what the, our topic tonight is. Uh, winning the battle. Okay? We must recognize that we are in a war and so these battles we must, especially these uh, some battles are actually strategic. If you don't win this battle, the next battle you will lose. Or you will lose uh, territory. 
And that will be disadvantage to you, okay? So we should choose the war we fight. We don't choose, uh, we don't battle everybody, okay? So the Bible said that uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 4, uh, the Bible says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay? If you have been uh, mocked, if you have been, you know, uh, hurt, okay, you don't have to always hurt back. Okay? If you can just let it go, somebody's messing with your pride, just let it go. That's not our battle, amen? Especially in the workplace. You cannot actually fight directly in the workplace. I'm a Christian, I should be the one on top. No. That's not a battle we need to win. Okay? We can win it if we can. If we are allowed to. But we don't have to win every war or every battle. But this war should be won. Okay? So for our warfare, for our, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Not carnal. Okay? We should uh, we should be able to identify which battles we must win or we must fight and uh, our methods okay, and what we should pull down what should be destroyed uh, some others we can just let it be okay? First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.18 says dito discharge I commit unto thee son Timothy according to the prophecies which were went before thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare okay? so they are in a war we are in a war, but it's uh, Paul is telling Timothy that you should what? You should be uh, a good soldier because it uh, told him that uh, Paul have committed this. If you know 2 Timothy 2, two right? Uh, <coughs> it's the, the same. So the things which I committed unto thee among uh, what is it then? Let's read. Okay? The disciples. The true disciples is the ones that are able to be committed the things of God. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we must commit these things in the discipleship, in the church, in the preaching. It is not enough if we can uh, uh, win the loss. Okay, it's good, but we should uh, teach others also. Okay, so Brother Mateus is here to learn. That's very good. Okay, so the other people I'm not, not familiar, but uh, we must learn. Amen. And then, so we are in a war. Okay, so how do we win this war? That's what, what we'll focus tonight. Can we actually win this war? We should, we can, and we should. Okay? And uh, the, the story that we'll be uh, studying is the one, again, the very famous but very uh, good uh, illustration of our Christian life. In a battle where sometimes our enemy is so daunting. Okay? You know that daunting? Na Tagalog, nakakatakot. Okay? Nakaka nakatakot. Gulayan ba naman eh? So how do you face an enemy like this one? Gulayan. Okay? He, uh, he, he's strong. He's big. He has the weapons. Not only that, he's the training, experience. Okay? Wow. What will we do? Okay? But uh, this tonight we will uh, study how. Oh, that's only 15 minutes. <laughs> Okay, anyway. So how we win? Actually, I have 15 very quick points. Okay, 15 very quick points on how we should win this battle. Strategic battles. So that we may uh, win the war itself. Okay? So, are you good? Okay, okay number one is uh, verse 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3 tells us the synopsis, or not synopsis, but yeah, synopsis of the event, right? So there is this uh, battle that is ongoing, okay? So number 1, accept the reality of war. That is uh, spoken in the introduction, so let's go to number 2. Number 2, recognize the fact that the enemy can be daunting, okay? Sometimes we have an enemy, 
Okay, in my uh, early years, high school, second year, we have this uh, Taekwondo class in school, high school. So my first, we had, of course, sparring, right? So did some martial arts here. Okay, now nobody, <laughs> boxing, okay? So the thing, the, the thing I like about Taekwondo or martial arts is uh, you will learn to fight. Okay, you will stand your ground, okay, you will control, control your emotion, and you will have a good grasp of, of, about your emotion, okay? You don't, uh, we are trained not to, you know, kill, kill the opponent, but you should hit it. You should hit him, hit it hard, but not kill him, okay? So my first parring in the commotion, they call commotion, is this uh, little man. <laughs> I'm high school, but the man is already about 35 years old. But it's small, alright? So I just give it in the hits, alright? So, but, but sometimes you can, uh, the one that is appointed as my opponent is very big, right? At those times, you, want, you just want to run, right? If you can run, okay? And, but uh, all the people or your colleagues are, you know, watching. So you cannot run, right? So what do you do? You stand your ground, okay? And then you try it. What will happen? You know. But the instruction is there to, the instructor is there to know. For you not to be killed, okay? But uh, when your uh, opponent is so large, you will begin to think for yourself, oh, what is this? Anong pinasa ko? Anong English? What on earth? Why am I here? Okay? It's unfair, right? I'm just uh, five seven, and my opponent is nine feet. Good luck, uh, good night. Okay, it's not fair, but not in life, really, it happens, right? So in soul winning, we meet people who are even their food for tomorrow. They will be a problem today. Okay, they will. Ah, uh, where will I get food tomorrow, next week? Okay, there are people like that. There are people who are, or their children, they don't know if they will study in school because they have no money. Some other people are what? Are actually uh, some uh, handicapped, okay? You know people like that. Uh, physically handicapped, but many people are mentally handicapped, right? Have you met some? On Facebook, right? There are a lot of mentally retarded and even uh, spiritually retarded. But anyway, so what do you do? First, you accept that we are in a war. In a war, you should, if you lose in a war, what happened? What happened? That happened to us, right? The Philippines, even in Europe, right? In Europe, they know war, right? Europe has been history of wars, but in the Philippines we know when we lose, we lose our rights, we lose a lot. We lose our freedom, okay? we lose our resources, they get the resources. So as much as possible, you don't lose a war, amen? And especially we as Christians, we don't lose a war. So accept the reality of war and then recognize the fact that enemy can don't think why, don't think. So that you will be ready, okay? It is possible. Especially in their days, the Amalekites, right? They have known it for a long time. These are giants. So there will become a time that you will face giant. What will you do? Then you face the fact, okay? So let's uh, read some of the text that uh, is here. So that will actually, uh, Brother Justin already Red. So what's the daunting there? Right? The description of Goliath is terrible. Okay? The height, what, what else? The, the weapon, okay? It's daunting. Okay? Meron pa siyang shield bearer. Okay? You have another person to bear the shield. To carry the shield. But another one is you have, a, you have a bad mouth, so do you watch boxing? I'm not saying that you should, but if you 
uh, watch boxing, right? They have no press conference and they will dirty talk and shout their trash talk. <laughs> What's that for? That is for making their opponent uh, fear, right? So that, this is exactly what Goliath did in okay, chapter uh, verse 24. Let's see. He said, Then all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Okay? Verse 42. Verse 42 said that and when the Philistine looked about and saw David and disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. Okay? Batang bata, fresh na fresh. And the Philistines, Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. So, this is a tactic, actually, very known tactic by anybody, even in sports, okay? Even in, uh, just again, uh, just uh, early today, uh, the United States is uh, threatening Iran. Ah, I, this may start the war. Those things can uh, terrify us, amen? So what are the problems of Christians? Okay, so we need, uh, I'm, I'm terrified of the man with the big arms, okay? I will not share the, in the word of God. <laughs> or there's a dog, or there's a... Something. There are a lot of things that uh, the devil, the, uh, our adversary can uh, make for us to fear, to have fear. So number, number two, just recognize it, okay? So in your days, for example, my son, Stephen, is always accompanying me, so reading. So at least he knows. He knows that sometimes there are times that it's, it's easy to win souls. But there are times that no. no? He's not in the... But there are, there's a time that uh, we met uh, Dating Dahan, Bastos. The, the man did the... Uh, we're winning another man. And he said, no, no, no. Sagutin mo muna to. Anong pangalan ng church no? Is there, is there the name of the church? The final... Wait, uh, wait, I will talk to you later. No, no, no. Bastos, I don't know English of Bastos. Ah, good, very good. Very mean. Okay, so there are times that it's hard. Okay, I'm not talking to him, I'm not talking to another person, but he's including, so it can be hard. But, uh, well, we survive, okay? And we're not in any way uh, stopping at any time. Okay? They don't want the gospel, somebody else wants the gospel. Amen? Brother Eric, may not. Except in the Lord. So number three, verse 26. So number one, accept the reality of war. Number two, recognize the fact that enemy can be daunting or terrifying. Okay, number three, a strong and godly leader is a must. Okay, verse 26, uh, what happened here? This David, the little man, okay, young man, Okay, nabasa ito kanina yung Dustin. Hindi ko na mabasahin ulit. Okay, we're not it again. But uh, David was described as, uh, you know, young, unpopular, and shepherd. Okay, he's not a soldier. Okay? So, but we need godly leaders. So, in a church like this, in church that we will be starting, I have friends, we have friends, right? From Europe. They are praying for a pastor there. In Hong Kong, they are praying for a pastor there. So we need godly leader, and we must pray for this godly leader. Amen? And uh, if we have a leader, at the moment, what we will do? We support him. Why? Because when we look at this uh, story, okay, the leaders are afraid, right? Saul himself is afraid. The king himself is afraid. How will you, how will you lead the soldiers? How will the soldiers face the battle if their leader is afraid? Okay? So if the leader is a thing, sino ba ako, di ba? Who am I? So we need godly leaders, we need strong leaders, and if you happen to have one leader, you must support it. You support him, okay? Nobody's perfect which is, uh, while you're training yourself, okay? You should, one thing you should be able to, uh, to see, it's not easy, right? To be a leader, so you're preparing yourself, prepare yourself. But at the moment, support your leader. Amen? Amen? We need leaders. And what happened here is, well, 
David is not a leader, but he's actually a leader. In heart, he is a leader. Before this, he was anointed king by Samuel. Okay? Samuel may be not uh, well respected at that sort, right? Because at uh, this moment, Israel is wicked at some degree. They have adopted a system that God have not instituted, that this kingdom, this worldly kingdom. They copied it from the heathen, okay? So that is not originally planned by God. So, so Samuel, even uh, David was anointed, is not uh, again. Because the system of the kingdom says who will uh, be the next king? Okay? The son, okay? If you heard the preaching of Pastor Anderson, nepotism, that's very, I can, I can relate because that is true, okay? In a church like this, okay? What's the name of the son? Zephaniah. <laughs> Zephaniah. Okay, the next pastor is Zephaniah. Is that right? Some Bible Baptist church, right? That's what they do. Just by virtue of the fact that he is my son, he's the next pastor. Wrong! Okay? The next leader should be uh, a strong leader. Is God given? Okay, if you don't, if you follow after the pattern of this world, you will fail as a church. Okay? So, we can see here, David is the next leader chosen by God. But that doesn't happen until how many years? Okay? So we need strong leaders. Number four, verse 28 and 29. It is said there, uh, 28, life is, so number four, expect opposition even in your own ranks. So David was opposed. I mean, is David doing the right thing? Because this Philistine is defying the armies of the living God. Okay, you can compare it to us, for example, if uh, somebody, a heathen, is uh, defying the Lord Jesus, for example. He doesn't know what he's talking about, obviously. But he's cursing Jesus. Will you do, will you do nothing? Okay? We will not hurt him, but you should do the, something. Amen? Actually, in this past uh, many months, I have some friends that are actually anti soviet also, but they don't preach strong against the homos, you know, the, the, um, the sodomites. They don't strongly oppose. They just, uh, don't, don't marry, but you just stay there, God still loves you. <laughs> but uh, in light of what is recently happening, they are waking up, amen? Because they see, what in the world? These animals. <laughs> they are seeing that if these people, okay, it's just, uh, we just let them do their thing. They will uh, eventually get to us. Okay? They will teach our children those abomination, what they're doing, their filth. Okay? So, but sometimes, who will oppose us? Okay? Uh, David is doing great. Man, he's expressing his disgust about this event. Right? This should not be doing. This is should be, that be happening. Amen. I mean, okay. a person defying the armies of the living God is in that time. So, but you see, when fear is in the heart of these people, they will do nothing. Okay? They should do something. They should be at least saying something. Right? But they are afraid. They don't do anything. Okay? But when uh, David expressed his opposition here, what happened? So, number one, uh, he uh, had some opposition. And even in, the, in his own ranks. His brother and later King Saul also, right? So, I mean Saul. So, the basa natin kanina, his uh, elder brother, Eliab, is accusing him of what? You have pride. No. He's doing what is right. He should go, uh, what do you call this? Yabanan, protest, di ba? He should protest this kind of uh, action on, uh, of the enemy. And then later in verse 33, sabi dyan si Saul naman, okay? And Saul said, thou art not able, hindi mo kaya yan. 
Huh? You're not able to do this. You're not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. David wants to fight, but other people, you know, his own now, supposedly, they're encouraging each other. Let's do this. Let's fight this. It should not happen. You're the one. What's happening? Their fear gets into them and then they oppose the man who is doing the right thing. So as a Christian, it, it always happens. It always happens. Right? When uh, by that time again uh, I spoken to another friend of ours. Okay, and then of course I have to clinch is the truth. Then and then tell them what they should hear. Okay. They're against the homos. Against the Sodomite, what else? And everything. And then, after I sat down, uh, I was corrected. <laughs> so it's sad. It's sad. Why would you oppose somebody who is speaking for God and for His Word? Amen? If you have a problem with God's Word, then address it, the doctrine, not the person. But that is the, the actions of these people who are afraid. They are afraid. That's not true. They are afraid. And because they are afraid, like of a Goliath in their lives, they turn on the people who should uh, be actually the hero. I mean, the model for this, who is standing up for the truth. Okay? So expect opposition. So number one, accept the reality of war, like we missed the fact. The enemy can be daunting as long as God leader is a must. We should support him. And uh, we, we should raise up leaders. Okay? Number four, expect opposition from your own love. Don't be discouraged. It's normal. It is normal in the time of David. It's normal in the time of Nehemiah, the, the time of Jesus, okay? Paul. They all experience it. Their friends turn, in them, turn uh, against them. Okay? So number five, the bold in speech. Okay? What did uh, David do? Verse 31. Actually, nadaan ako na nito. And with the words, <clears throat> were heard, which David spake, he rehearsed them to the four souls. So, the, what David is doing is just, ah, uh, the people are hearing him, what happened? Okay? It was heard, okay? So, that this is what we do. Sometimes we cannot do something, right? We're not congressman to block the soggy bill, but we express our voice, Amen? should express our opinion, not be silent about it. If we're disgusted about this all of us, we tell people. And of, but first and foremost, of course, we should know that we are right. Okay? If we are right, we have no uh, uh, all this unfairness, right? We're just telling it because it is the truth. Okay? We express it. And then the, the good thing will follow, actually. And then the and, and what happened here? Okay, number six also, prepare yourself for such an opportunity. Number six, prepare yourself for such an opportunity. An opportunity will go to you, okay, will come to you if you express your uh, thoughts, okay? Many, this happens always in the workplace, okay? I can do that, okay, no, right? If you say that, ah, this is the one we should do, we should do this and not that, Okay, who will be the next uh, one given the opportunity to, you know, to show his skills or talents or what they can do, diba? The one who express his opinion. If you're just silent, okay, do what you want. You will not have opportunity to be great. That's, the, that's what we should see here, okay? So what happened here? He was given the opportunity. Rather reluctantly, but still he had, right? Nobody in their people knew that he can, he can actually pull this off. Nobody. But uh, he had the opportunity and he grabbed it. Okay? So next is, if you have already the opportunity, what's, what to do next? Uh, verse uh, 38 and 39. Okay? Okay, sige, go. Fight if you want. Okay, it's time to prepare your weapon. Okay, yeah. so 38 and Saul and um, David. Okay, Saul tried to you know help David out by lending his armor, but uh, David uh, tried it, 
But uh, I like his uh, word here. He said that uh, I have not proved them. Okay? I have used this every time. This very statement. Okay? If you have a tool that you have not proved, you don't know how to use it. Or you, you know how to use it, but you, know, you don't know how, how to use it when. Okay? Don't use it. Okay? If what is his thing is uh, your life, okay? don't use it. And what David did here is he uh, rejected the gears or the weapons that he has not proved. Ibig sabihin, hindi niya kaya ito, hindi niya alam. Maganda nga yan, the armor is good, but I cannot use them because I'm not used to using it. It's, I have not proved it. Okay? So in our soul winning, in our war, in our battle, what is this? Okay? So in our soul winning, it's always pointed out that you use your own method. Right? Just, of course, this should be based on the Word of God. But you can use your own illustration, okay? We are, uh, Brother Jeff and I, we have different, somewhat different, but still the same, right? The same message, the same gospel, the same truths of the Bible, the same salvation. But we use uh, the, the stories, the illustrations that we are familiar with. Okay? So that's what uh, David did. He uh, picked his weapon in verse 30 that he's familiar with, most familiar with, and most appropriate. Okay? So in uh, he uh, told the story of how he killed the lion and the bear. Okay? What he's facing now is not a lion and not a bear. Animals are more stupid, right? Though they are also terrible. Lalo na ang tao. Okay? This is a warrior. So he chose a uh, weapon that he knows well and he can use well and is appropriate to the battle. So that's what we should do. Okay? Learn it. Okay? For missionaries, learn the place, the environment, the people, the custom. Anything you can learn, you should learn it. Because you're like a, like a stupid person. Okay? If you have not the right Weapons for the war, for the battle. Amen? Uh, if you're fighting a uh, rifleman, for example, a sniper, you cannot just storm the field, okay? You will be dead. Okay? So choose the weapons well. Choose your weapon well in order to fight and win the battle. Next, know therefore and declare the battle is of, is of the Lord. So there's a whole sermon. Let's just uh, talk about this. The battle is of the Lord. But right now, it's just a one point. Okay? Because this is a sermon that has been preached and preached uh, many times. Okay? Sabi dyan? For, verse 47. Okay? And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And He will give you into my hand. So, again, it's uh, waged with the weapons. But still... There are many factors, okay, that can make you lose or win in the battle. So always remember that. So I mentioned a while back, sometimes you don't need to uh, fight a battle. Okay? If you see that, okay, I don't, the man is, you know, hard, hard nuts or hard case, okay, and I'm just uh, practicing so really, okay, I just leave him, okay, or... I, I don't need to battle everything or everyone or every time. Okay? So this is the Lord's battle. Everything actually that you do, that we do, should surround that. Okay? Should be about that. This is the battle of the Lord and therefore uh, this is what I do. This is the weapon I will use. Okay? Let's kill the Sodomites. No. Okay? The Lord will take care of that. Okay? We don't do it ourselves. We should know that because this is the Lord's battle. That that statement, this is the Lord's battle, will bind us, okay? In the things that we should do and not do. That's only the point, okay? Number nine, don't lose sight of the big, that it is a big consideration that the Lord and His people's reputation is at stake. This is a good point, okay? I will repeat, don't lose sight that is a, it is a big consideration that the Lord and His people's reputation is at stake. What is reputation? Some people don't mind their reputation. Is that right? 
So sometimes reputation is very important. Okay, big businessman, career people know that. Okay, we should uh, mind our reputation, our testimony. That's another term. Okay, so have you noticed how many times did uh, David bring up or brought up the 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 scene of this Philistine and uh, that made him uh, angry? What is that? That you defy the Lord, you defy the. The armies of the living God, you defy, 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 defy. What is defy? You're mocking them or you're uh, looking down on them. That should not be. Or that is important because sometimes uh, in a battle and in a war, we lose sight of it. And it's very important that, for example, in the church, we should, uh, we should consider the reputation of our church. Okay? You don't care for your reputation, but how about the church? Okay? So you should keep it that in mind. Okay? Nalami kayo. May dito natin. Okay? Okay. Next is number 10. It takes courage. Okay? So ito na yung pinaka isa mga obvious. No? If you're in a battle, it takes courage. You should be very courageous. Okay? The Lord has uh, often uh, said Joshua. Okay? Joshua is already a courageous man, but how many times did the Lord remind him, be very courageous, very courageous, very courageous. Because in a battle, you should, should be courageous. And what did uh, David display there? Okay? A lot of people, Eliab and Saul, is uh, discouraging him, but what did he do? In the actual fight, you don't, you don't just, you know, he wasn't Touch the no. He runs. I mean, di ba? That's uh, verse forty-eight. Okay, sabi jan. It came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to him to meet David, and David ran away. Ano ba? No, and he hastened. Sabi dito. And ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. So, so it's very important. If you are in a battle, alam mo na gera na rin lang yun. Eh. Patay, di patay, di ba? So, what should you do? So, kanina, inaasal siya, tinatrash talk siya, di ba? So, kasi ang gera, ganun, gulatan yan. Okay? And many times, ganyan pa atin. So, if you're a preacher, tas bubulungan ka, huwag mong babanatan naman, ha? Don't talk about ties and offerings, okay? If you're a guest speaker, right? Or don't talk about certain things. No! If uh, the word of God tells you to preach that, you should preach that. Don't uh, touch the bullet, okay? And this is what David do. Well, as an example for us, the enemy is there. He goes to the enemy, okay? Be brave. Okay, don't run, not run from the enemy. The, the idea is to kill the enemy, right? So that's what we do. Ah, what if our enemy is tackling, falls tackling? How should we do? How should we deal with that? You study it. You don't dodge over it. And uh, what's our friends uh, saying about this doctrine? I will just uh, defend our friends. No. You study the doctrine. Okay? You study it. Face, head on. And then you don't dodge it. You don't... Okay, yung sa taga? May isa pang term sa English eh. Iniilagan. Avoid it. Yes. You don't avoid it. That's the enemy. You don't... How should you kill the enemy in avoiding the enemy? No. Uh, the intention is to kill the enemy, to win the battle, you run toward it, okay? And number 11, ito na yung pinaka, no? So execution. So number 11, hit the target, right timing, right execution. So it's a 49. It's a 49. And David put his hand on his bag, okay? Very basic. Bag, stone, sling, and smooth, okay? But not just anywhere, right? If you are in a battle, you must win it at the most, uh, not the most, the least time, okay? You should win, especially David with uh, disadvantage, okay? You should uh, win immediately, okay? In the boxing, ganun din, diba? If you can uh, knock out the enemy, don't wait for round 12, okay? No. 
especially if you're in the disadvantage. So what David did, if you uh, if you can see here, he goes straight to his uh, target, right? The forehead. Why forehead? Well, the you know that the head is very vulnerable. If you hit the head, it's the end. Okay? If you hit the arm, still have one arm. If you hit the leg, still have two arms. If you hit the head, nothing is left. Okay, he dies. Okay, especially if uh, the the timing execution is right, the target, the execution is correct. Okay. So actually, it's just very basic. But sometimes, in soul winning, okay, people that are not yet uh, that uh, good at soul winning, what do we do, right? We want to be friends. We have to ask a, a lot of things. I mean, no, we can, have, we can, we we actually have developed a way to do the soul winning in the least possible time, right? Most of 20 minutes, okay? Ah, that's very easy. Well, this is very easy, right? How many shots that did uh, David have to do? Just one. Because it's right on target, okay? When we soul win, okay, when you preach, whatever you do, okay? You know your purpose, you know your target, and you do it. You hit it, okay? Palibot-libot pa. Ang matagal na po ba kayo dito? Hindi. Ligtas ka ba? Sigurado mo ba? <laughs> Are you know? Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? At least, if you don't want us, then we can go to the next soul, right? But many of these, many of these people, if you ask them direct question, but of course, very respectfully, they will respond. They will get saved because you're right on target. So they will not have to wonder, second guess you, ano ang ginagawa nito dito? Why are you, ano mo, bebenta sa akin to, insurance? No, we are here to get you saved. Right on target. And then next, we have 10 minutes. Number 12. Believe that even the most terrifying enemy can fall and defeat them. That's very important because if you know that anyone, there's no way I can beat this 12 feet or something. There's no way that I can beat an army, for example, this magnitude. There's no way I can win my uh, loved one to the Lord. No way, no way. These rich people, no way. Then you lose, okay, in the onset. Don't do that, okay? <clears throat> I believe that uh, David used, uh, again, his uh, slingshot, and uh, as he said a while ago, right, this is the Lord's battle. He knows he can win. Okay, he knows he can win, and he did win. Because he believed that the enemy can be beaten kahit magano kalaki yan. Okay, no matter how daunting the enemy is. Amen? Okay, number 13, say, turn to the last, okay. Be resourceful. Okay? There are times, okay, you are very, or very, very, very Baptist Church Manila, you're very blessed. Okay? You have aircon in your first year. Okay? You have many members. You are very, but sometimes if you're a servant of God, you have to be resourceful. You have no resource. So you should use what is available, amen? And if you read verse 51, okay? Is David resourceful? Okay, he have no sword, okay? Because he doesn't want him to be dragged by the sword. The sword is very heavy, okay? And he's, he should be nimble, you know, that term nimble. <laughs> and so what he only carried is his slingshot. And when the person, when the enemy is killed, okay, he have a sword. Okay. I use the sword to kill him, okay? So the lesson here is what? You can use the enemy's weapon against him. You know that. Again, you should learn some defense. <laughs> very useful and very uh, uh, resourceful. Right? So one of the tips 
and uh, you know, for example, uh, Stephen is very small, and his uh, enemy, for example, is brother Herman. How can you defeat that? Right? So one of the tips is to use his weight against him, right? You know that. Use his weight. So especially in judo, okay. if he strike you there, he land, then strike. Okay. That's the way. That's one of the best ways and tips in fighting the battle. Okay. You know that. Sometimes uh, try to watch or read about uh, battles. Okay. So I have no time to give the story of uh, some uh, battles that happened that I attended up on. But uh, definitely, sometimes even the, for example, for example, the, I remember, but uh, the, the recent stories I've heard and uh, watched and uh, search about the Second World War, the aircraft carriers, okay, and the, and the battle cruisers of the time, okay, those are very heavy ships, okay, and can destroy another ship, okay, they are that strong, but they are also vulnerable, why? Because one ship can be sunk by one airplane at that time, if you have uh, the right pilot, the right opportunity, they they just carry one bomb, one bomb, but uh, very explosive, okay? They drive that bomb through the center of the aircraft carrier that will sink, okay? So let's say the airplane and the bomb is, uh, let's say, one million. The Yamato battleship is what? One billion. You can do that. That's one of the many, many tips and uh, things that you should know about battle. You can win, okay? If the enemy is uh, heavy, you're small, use the use your speed, okay? So that's what we should do. And so winning, how do we do that? In the church, okay? So the people that are the most uh, prideful are the rich, right? So don't don't use carnal things. So you don't, uh, ah, you go to a church. No, you use something else, okay? You use, uh, some people use the children, okay? The, those things. Next, last, I get to the last, encourage and be encouraged by the brethren by winning the battle. So again, uh, battles are fought by soldiers. They are won by soldiers. Okay? Be done with that. Okay? If the soldier is disheartened, what will happen? They have weapons, okay, but if they are disheartened, you cannot win. So what David did here is what? He encouraged the brethren in verse 52. Let's see what happened. After he killed Goliath, what happened? To the army that is, you know, very afraid at the beginning, right? They were very afraid. They are fleeing from the land, right? Hindi sila katakot. <laughs> Sumisigaw pala yung alaw. <laughs> Pero nang matay si Goliath, what happened? Verse 52. And when the men of Israel, and when the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the, uh, pursued the field, tumapang. Di ba? Hinabol, no? Pursued the field until thou come to the valley and the gates of Echol. Uh, simply said, they uh, they were encouraged. Amen? Yung kaninang takot, their fear, then they were encouraged and they were very courageous. And that's very important. Okay? In any aspect, in any battle, the, for example, no, oh, time is so weary, we will eh. No, we should do it. Okay? Sometimes the one who will lead these people to do the right thing will do actually a lot of things. Okay? By encouraging the other people. You know you can do it alone, you just lead the people. And, and they will do the rest. Amen? And. Next is last. Okay, last. Ito yung maganda. Okay? So,
So we are all saved. Okay, let's not do anything. We are saved, right? Amen. Amen. Let us not labor. We are saved. No. Because actually, winning against the enemy has its rewards. Okay? Verse 9. Let's read. Verse 9. Let me let finish here. Verse 9. John, if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants? This is what Goliath said. But if I prevail against him, anyway, Goliath. So if uh, they prevail against Goliath, they will be servants. Okay, so no much bloodshed. Okay, just two people killing the other, then no other bloodshed. Okay, the battle is won. That's actually a good thing. People uh, do that in warfare. Okay. So, what's the reward there? If you kill the one person, the battle is done. Okay? Also, verse 25. And the man of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely to defy Israel has come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. So, that may be peace, right? So, kayamana, riches, then, honor. Yung asawa mo, anak ng hari. And then, his father's house free this way. So, man, kung nagtatax tayo, di ba? Sino ka ba itong tax dito? Laki, di ba? E kung bihira, pinatay mo yung mga tax free ka na, di ba? Parang yung mga Olympiad natin, di ba? Nakagod ka. Wala ko natin nakagod. Di ba? Okay. Cash price, okay? Because you've done something important. Amen? So, that's something we should do and target. And uh, be our goal. Amen? No, 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 that's not for me. That's too large. But anyway, Goliath. Always remember, if you do something important, you will also be richly rewarded. Amen? Amen. So that's it. Actually, we have uh, some other things. Uh, in the end, he was recognized, right? He was recognized. So, how do we win? We do these things, okay? You cannot know this uh, just one night. Okay, you read this. I will share this to you. Let's do this. Amen? This is a battle we should not lose. Okay? And we should be effective in carrying, up, carrying it out. Okay? Kaysa mapatay ka, then this call is very bad. No. We win this battle. Amen? Amen? Are we in the battle? The new IFV? Mira. Nati-disable na yung mga video na sinero. Ang gabi. So, but no, we continue the fight, amen? If yes. we have to do it in the old-fashioned way, we do it still. And it's plain, oh no, I'm salamat, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Uh, the absence of Brother Majestami, Lord, we pray his uh, safety. And uh, we be, may be renewed there in the college, Lord. And we return, Lord, and we be college also. But we be been there, and, uh, freshmen, Lord. Pray for this church, Lord. We, uh, they will be encouraged and on. Fight the battles. Really fight and win. Win the battles. Because uh, we know that in this war, there are many battles that we should win. Sometimes if we lose one or two major battles, then uh, the war can be lost. So we pray, we learn, we guide us, and uh, that with the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.